Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Petros Fore. This lesson, we are going to be looking at trigonometry, or in short, trig ratios, a very important concept of mathematics. We'll be talking about sine, cosine, tangent, and famously, the word socatoa. This is an instrument we use to find the missing length of a right angle triangle, or it can also be used to find an angle that could be missing. Firstly, when we have a right angle triangle, it's right angled because one of its angles is 90 degrees. So these are the important parts of a right angle triangle. First, we have the longest side, which is called the hypotenuse, and we also have the adjacent side. This is the side which is next to the angle that has been highlighted. And finally, we do have what we call the opposite side. This is the side which is directly opposite the angle that has been given. Remember, the opposite side always is located directly opposite whatever angle you've been given. It is important for us now to quickly have a look at how these sides can be identified in an activity. I want you to pause this video and identify the adjacent, the hypotenuse, and also the opposite side of each of these eight right angle triangles. It's time to reveal. First, for the first one, this must be what you got, okay? And the second one, obviously, remember the adjacent side is the side which is next to the angle. And always the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angle triangle. So you start by identifying the hypotenuse of the triangle first, then you indicate the adjacent and the opposite. Okay, that's the fifth, the sixth, and finally the eighth. I believe you managed to identify the correct sides of this triangle. So we'll be using these triangles. These triangles, as you can see, they have been drawn in a way that we have so car toa. So how are we going to be using this? We'll be using this in a way that when we are using the first one, which is so, this is for the sine triangle. The second one is for the cosine triangle. Remember C for cosine, S for sine. And the third one is for the tangent triangle. Remember this is so, ka, toa. The first thing you need to understand from this expression, you can tell that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over its hypotenuse. As you can see in this triangle, sine of x is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. At the same time, if you are given, let's say, the hypotenuse and you want to find the opposite, you are now going to say the hypotenuse is equal to opposite over sine of x. The same thing now, if you want to find the opposite, you are now going to say opposite is equal to, if it's both are at the bottom here, it will be sine of x multiplied by the hypotenuse. Okay, so this applies for each one of these, whether it's in cosine and tangent. The application of the concept of these triangles is the same. When you are faced with a trigonometry question, you need to decide which rule to use. And to decide on which rule to use, first you have to identify what you have been given. We have an example of a triangle here. We've been given an angle. This is the adjacent side. And obviously this is the opposite. So you have to label the sides that you have been given. I have my triangles. So this is my hypotenuse, this is the adjacent side, and that is my opposite side. Now we are supposed to tick what we have been given and cross out what we haven't been given. First, we have adjacent. So we look in here and tick where we have an A for adjacent. We have those two, which means this is the cosine and this the tangent. That eliminates the first one automatically. We are now going to say, okay, I have the opposite side. So which one is the opposite? It's this. So we are going to use the tangent. How do we apply the tangent? We are now going to find the opposite side using this adjacent and the angle that has been given. Okay. We are now going to decide which rule to use when you are given a triangle like this. Let's have a look. First, like I said, we need to find out is it sine, cosine, or tangent. We are going to label the hypotenuse, adjacent, and the opposite side. Now, let's take what we have been given. We have our edge. Now, we are going to indicate edge and tick wherever we have edge. As you can see, on this section, we don't have an edge, so we can cross it out. Now, what else 
are we using? We have the adjacent. Let's go and identify where we have adjacent. When we have this, it simply means we are going to be using cosine. So the cosine rule is going to be applied. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Which sides have we been given? Remember, the adjacent is always next to the angle. If you are given this angle up here, it means this side will now be your adjacent. Okay, so in this case, we are given the hypotenuse. Let's tick the hypotenuse. Okay, I want you to continue and identify which rule do we use now in a case like this. I will pause for a second. Let's see your work. We have eliminated this one. Now, what other side have we been given? We have the opposite. So we can tick that and then it means we are going to be using the sine rule. Okay, so we eliminate that and we can finally conclude that we are using the sine rule. How do we solve problems using trig ratios? We are now going to use what we call the cover up method using the same soccer tour so that we see how to calculate this. So if we are using the sign rule from the word soccer tour, we need to cover the opposite. So as it stands, we write our soccer tour here and after having placed this, we are now going to cover the opposite side. So if we cover the opposite, we will now say the opposite is equal to the sine of x multiplied by the hypotenuse. If we are using the cosine rule, we are now going to cover the hypotenuse. So we will cover the side that we are looking for. Then we are now going to have the hypotenuse is equal to adjacent over the uh, cosine of x. Let's say we are using the tangent rule and then we are looking for an angle. Okay, if we are looking for an angle, which is the tangent of x, so we are looking for x, what do we cover? We cover the t. So this tangent of x, as you know, from this appearance, we can now say the opposite over the adjacent. Then we find the tangent of x. Okay, how can we then use trig ratios or trigonometry to find the length first? Let's look at this first scenario. What have we been given? So we need to label it. Hypotenuse, adjacent, and the opposite side. So if we have been given this, we now have to decide which rule are we then going to use. Like we did before, we have the adjacent. So we have to tick where the adjacent is. Now we have to find the opposite. So we have to tick where O is. So this goes off and then it simply means we are going to use the tangent rule. Using the tangent rule, Remember, we are now going to say the tangent of 35 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which will be represented like this. So we are looking for the opposite side. Opposite side would be equal to the tangent of x, which is 35, and then we multiply by the adjacent. So we state first the relationship, and then we substitute our values. After we have done that, it is 8.4 centimeters. Remember, our starting point is to label. We have to decide which rule to use. I'm sure you have decided on the rule to use. So we need to find out, okay, we have the opposite. We tick where we have the opposite, which means the cosine goes off, okay? Now, we are looking for x, which is the adjacent. So we are going to tick where the adjacent is, which means we are using the tangent rule. By so doing, you are now going to use the cover up. So we cover A, okay? So we are going to cover A, which means the adjacent is equal to the opposite over the tangent of x. And then from there, substitute and get our answer as 7.15. Well done if you got this correct. If you made a mistake, it's okay. Don't let this opportunity pass without learning from your mistakes. Mistakes are part of learning. Now in this case, we are going to find the angle, okay? So we have been given sides, but how then can we find the angle? We need to decide on the rule. What have we been given? The opposite side and the adjacent. So we tick what we have been given, okay? And then, which means we are going to use tangent. By so doing, we are now going to cover T. Tangent will now be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Once we have done this, we have to substitute our values and when we substitute, we can now say tangent of x is equal to 7 over 12. How then can we find the value of x? We have to use the tan inverse. On our calculator, you press the second function, then you press tan inverse, and it will now appear like this, which is the opposite of the tangent. So remember to put brackets when you type in the 7 over 12. The answer is 30. Let's have a look at this one. You label your triangle, and then 
decide which rule to use. After deciding which rule to use, you need to draw your triangles. So you can indicate Sokatoa, okay? So we have the opposite side, we have the opposite there, which means cosine goes off. What else have we been given? The hypotenuse, which combination has the hypotenuse, which is H? We have the sine rule. So we are going to cover S. So we are now having this relationship. Sine of X is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. When you have done this, you are now going to substitute your values. Find the inverse of the sine. How do you do that? Second function, then sine to get the inverse, then open bracket 9 over 14, close bracket, it gives us 40 degrees. If you know how to use this, it's simply mathematics. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, post in comments below. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Good day.